For this example, I've prepared a puzzle game. Your goal is to turn all, to turn all the lights off by clicking these tiles. Each time it, you click a tile, that tile and all adjacent tiles flip their color. And what's really cool is, we can have crazy stuff like here, we can have these bridges, we can have holes, and if I click a hole, nothing happens. I can have these island types. Basically, I can have anything. And it works because no single tile knows anything about its surrounding tiles. So if I click here, this tile doesn't know anything about these four. And in return, these four only know the position of this tile, but nothing else. So let's take a look at how to make this happen. Okay, before we started, I have prepared two color materials, one bright yellow and one dark yellow. So let's go ahead and create an empty game object and apply our rectangular grid component. Set our sizes, let's say 4, 4, and 0. That should do fine. Now create a cube and apply our dark yellow texture. Let's name this object grid. And let's place it here. So now we can set auto snapping, which will help us place our cubes. So let's duplicate it a few times. Now before I start scripting, I should mention I'm going to use delegates and events, which are C sharp territory. So if you don't know about any of these, there's a good tutorial by Prime31 Studios, who also got me started, so check it out. Now let's create two C sharp scripts. One is going to be called Lights Manager, and the other is Lights Behavior. The idea is to take this Lights Behavior and apply it to every single tile, while Lights Manager will be the one which will manage our lights. Let's start with our Lights Manager. We won't be using any of these. Instead, what we need is a delegate. So let's start by public delegate void and let's call it switching handler. It takes a vector free and which are our switch coordinates. Switch coordinates and it takes a grid as well. So rect grid the grid. Now we also need an event, public static event of type switching handler on hit switch. So what the setup does is our delegate is the type, so it tells us which data we need, and our switch switch and our event this is, is the specific event that will be fired. So that's the name and this is the type. So if you're unfamiliar with delegates and events, what it does is basically something happens at one place and at another place stuff reacts. So it's very similar to how Unity handles send event, broadcast event and so on. Except this is native c .NET functionality, so it's really fast and performant. You could, for example, use it in an RPG where the hero draws a sword and then villagers run away, guards draw their weapons, and rocks don't do anything because that would be stupid. We should also use a function to store the grid private rect grid cached grid, and we need two, two more functions. And we need one function that actually does something. Public static void send signal. So this function takes in a vector free, which contains the coordinates of our switch. And this is the function that actually sends this event. So when I click my switch, this function will be called, then it performs a few checks, and then it sends the message. So let's make a check. 
we need actually two checks if cached not equal null and so first we need to make sure we actually have a grid also we need to know we need to make sure that someone is listening to this event so if there's no one subscribed to it and we fire an event then we would get a runtime error so we need to perform a small check on hit switch not equals null and then we can actually send our event on hit switch of cached grid dot world to grid so we take our coordinates from our switch and turn it into grid space and we also send our grid okay that's it for this script just to make sure we don't get any errors okay I found out where the problem is we need to set private static grid also I changed the type from rectangular grid to grid and I changed the name so in C sharp you always make need to make sure the name of your file matches also the name of the class or else you get errors so now everything works fine what static does is it means we don't need a special reference to the to the object of the instance of the script instead we just call the name of the script and it works so we don't even need to know where the grid is okay so we take the switch manager and apply it to our grid and that's it for now now let's take a look at our lights behavior again throw these out and let's start with a few variables so what we need first is a material public material on material and we also need an off material we need to check the state so public bool is on and let's start with false as default and cache our components and now we can write our functions we need our awake we need on disable and on enable we need a function which will be called when we hit a switch so on hit switch and this will be the function which reacts to our event so we need the vector free called switch position and we need a grid the grid we also need a function to switch our lights so void switch lights and we need a function to handle mouse input so something happens when the user actually clicks so void on mouse up as button Let's start with a simple function if is on set our render as material to on material and else set it to the off material. And in awake, we will first cache our components and we will perform one initial light switch. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to subscribe to our event and we need to unsubscribe from our event. So, the best place to do this is in on enable. So, every time you turn the script on and off, for example, during runtime or in the editor you will automatically subscribe and unsubscribe. The syntax is switch 
Manager dot on hit switch plus equals and then the function we want to call on hit switch. And unsubscribing works pretty much the same way except we say minus equals. Okay, now we need to a way to actually send our event. So I'll do it in on mouse up this button. Switch manager dot send signal and we need to pass a vector free. So this will be our position, cache transform dot position. And okay. So as you can see we do, we don't need to specify which switch manager we need because switch because this function has been declared as static. So static and it just means there's only one. So we don't need a special instance. Same thing here. We don't need a special on hit switch because again it's static. There's only one. Okay, and now the only thing missing is actually to do something. But let me first get back to my setup and explain what will happen now. So let's say I click this tile. Then this tile calls a function in our switch manager, which in return sends an event. So what happens during this event is every tile will go and check am I a neighbor of this switch tile. So am I left, right, up or down? No more than one unit. If so, then I will switch my color. If not, then I won't do anything. Which means the first thing we need to do is store the position of our tile, current tile, as a vector free. And we will do so in grid space. So let's say the grid dot world to grid of cache transform dot position. And these, the switch position is already in grid space, so we don't need to do anything here. Next thing we need to decide is if this tile that is currently checking is actually adjacent to the switch. So if this is the switch, we need to make sure we are no more than one unit apart. Is adjacent. And now comes the math. Math f dot eps of my position dot x minus switch position dot x and it should be less or equal than 1. And the same thing needs to apply for the y coordinate. So so what it happens is mathf.eps takes the distance between these two and as long as distance is less or equal than 1, or oh wait, 1.0f, it needs to be a floating number. In JavaScript you would you could just write 1, but here in C sharp we need to make sure it's actually written as a floating number. So if these are no more than one unit apart, they are adjacent. Now that would usually be enough, but you could run into some runtime problems. For example, the engine might show you one, but the true distance would be 1.1000001, which would be more than one. So we need a little bit of tolerance, so I'm just going to say 1.1, which won't make any problems during gameplay because it's either 1 or 2, and 2 is already too much. Now this gives us 8 ties and one ninth, which is the switch itself. Now, if I wanted to play this game, I don't want the diagonal ones, so I need to exclude them. So let's write another bool variable. Bool is diagonal equals 0 0.0f less or equal than mathf.eps 
both the same thing. And the same thing for y. And it has to be adjacent. So to explain what happens now is, let's say we're here. Then the difference between the x-coordinates is 1 and the difference between the y-coordinates is 1. If you're here, then the difference between x-coordinates is 1 and between y-coordinates it's 0. And by using this check, I'm saying they must both be greater than 0. So this tile would not be diagonal. And we also set is adjacent, so we don't get all these which are far apart. And again we should apply some tolerance. So 1.1. Okay, and this is basically the hardest part. All we need to do is if is adjacent and not is diagonal then is on gets flipped so it's not is on and then we perform a switch light so we check if our child which we are currently examining is adjacent and not diagonal and if so we flip the state of our is on flag and then we switch lights which if the state has been flipped will flip the lights and if the state hasn't changed then this function won't do anything so let's hit save check for errors nothing and we can now apply I'm just going to select all cubes and apply the lights behavior. Now let's take this cube and set. Okay, now it should be fine. Again, let's take this cube, set is on for this one. And, oh, right. Again, I need to set my on material and my off material. So let's select all our cubes. And take the bright yellow as on material and dark yellow as off material. Hit play. And now you can try solving this puzzle.